why use CFD, right? I mean, uh, we have all these processes that are in place today, but um, why would you want to use CFD to study these uh, processes? And uh, the answer to this question is not simple. I mean, you have, uh, it's a fairly loaded question, uh, but a simple answer would be that, you know, the experimental measurements uh, that are in place to study some of these systems and flows, uh, they're very expensive. And you can't really do these experiments in um, real plant scale systems. So you mainly do the experiments in small scale lab scale systems. Uh, and you try to use that information to uh, scale up, uh, kind of transform that solution uh, across a much larger scale. Uh, so there are a lot of assumptions and simplifications involved. And we saw that, you know, a lot of times, uh, especially for fluid mechanics, uh, a, tech, a lot of techniques involve uh, visualization. I mean, they, they it involves taking pictures of the system and then analyzing those images uh, using image processing techniques to extract useful information. Um, so it, it makes using some of the well-established uh, visual techniques uh, useless uh, for multi-phase flow systems. And also you need to understand that, you know, uh, a lot of experimental measurements, um, they give us point information, um, but, but when we are looking to um, understand an entire system, point information is not very useful. So, um, and also the other thing is, you know, we usually don't measure the quantity of interest directly. For example, if I want to uh, measure the velocity of my flow in a multi-phase flow system, I don't directly measure the velocity, but I measure uh, some electrical signal that is again transformed into velocity using certain transformation functions. So there are some errors that are introduced uh, when we do experimental measurements. And a lot of times uh, when we deal with complex systems, um, it's not possible to put a probe inside the system uh, because we might be dealing with high temperatures or pressures uh, that might damage the uh, experimental probe. Um, so it may not be possible to do actual experiments. So these are some of the reasons why uh, doing experiments or you know uh, getting reliable data through experiments is going to be difficult. Um, when we use the computational fluid dynamics, which is, it is a numerical way of solving uh, the problem at hand, the complexity of the geometry uh, and the process, they can be easily handled if we have the right models in place, right? I mean, we, if, if, I, if I want to solve a problem that involves high temperature, if I know the models, you know, the model, uh, to solve for the transport equation of my energy correctly, then I can easily solve that. I mean, it's as simple as solving any other problem if I have the right model. Also CFD allows engineers to test out a lot of different designs on computer. Um, and, if, and if you really want to do an experiment, you don't really have to do experiment on all the possible design scenarios. So CFD can help you narrow down, narrow down the design and then only do experiments for um, the cases that, that are most relevant to your application. Um, these are some of the applications of uh, CFD for studying multi-phase flows. There are many more, um, but right, I mean, any, uh, any usage of any tool comes with a but. So in this, it is very easy to, you know, generate very colorful plots and images using CFD, but we need to be careful. We need to understand uh, what the model that you're using is capable of, and you need to clearly validate your findings. I mean, when you use um, any numerical technique to solve a problem, you need to make sure that the predictions that you're getting from the model are accurate. And you need to do that either by comparing your results against um, experimental data that you might have for the same system, or try to look at the literature. I mean, if you can find something in the literature that resembles your system, you need to compare it against that. Or if you if you're solving a plant level problem, then you need to use some of the information from the plant uh, to make sure that you know you're in the right direction. So it's very easy to get misled uh, by the colorful images and plots that CFD can generate uh, and get carried away. But uh, you need to make sure that it is a tool, and you need to learn how to use this tool efficiently to answer engineering questions.
So that is more important.